in many churches. It, it is a problem that you know affects many Christians. Okay, now first thing is that we understand that um, males and females are different. It's very important to understand this. Uh, okay, now here I put down here. Be aware that females treasure relationship much more than males. When a husband listens to the wife and responds to her needs and feelings, she will be more peaceful. If her issues are not resolved, she will have more emotions. So, um, female, pay attention to relationship more. And that's why, you know, that uh, in most families, the mother takes care of the children more. And she listens to the children, uh, she listens, she pays attention to the feeling of the husband, and of the children, uh, she is more. Uh, she pays attention uh, more to the relationship and feelings. And males uh, have uh, more concentrate in um, in tasks, fulfilling tasks, doing jobs. That's why most of the construction in the world are done by men. That most of the jobs. Now, of course, there are many women who have jobs also, but m most of the construction in the world, <coughs> what I mean construction is, uh, is any kind of building or business. Most of, most of the uh, businesses are head, headed by men uh, because men are more, uh, they're more interested in tasks, doing work, finishing a job. Now, this is God's Preparation. God prepared men and women different. God created men and women different. That God has created men to be more <coughs> task oriented. That men want to finish the task. That men want to uh, overcome problems uh, of, you know, how to overcome, how to fix something, how to repair something. So men are more interested in that. And women are more interested in relationship and feelings. And men, uh, women, uh, treasure relationship more. Women depend on relationship more. And then what happens is when women uh, do not have a good relationship, when the husband doesn't pay attention to her, when the man doesn't care about her, doesn't love her, then she will feel very um, unhappy. She will be hurt greatly. She treasures the relationship much more. And we can see this even in little girls and little boys. We can see that little boys like to play with, you know, like guns and cars. And little girls like to play with dolls. And also little girls like to talk with people. Uh, and sometimes little boys don't pay attention to uh, other people as much. They just pay attention to what they are interested to do. And little girls are more interested in people, in talking to people, in having a relationship with people. We can see that. Like uh, when I was, you know, uh, in one church, actually in more than one church that I minister in, that we greet the people at the uh, entrance at the door of the church when we leave, uh, when church is over, and then I greet all the people and shake hands with them. And I noticed that the little boys sometimes are playing with their cars and the guns, the toys, and then, but the little girls, when the parents carry them, they, even little girls, pay attention to the pastor and greet me and respond to me. Now, one time, uh, years later, one time there was a gathering, a, a meeting, and then a young woman walked up to me. Uh, she was in uh, her 20s, you know. And she walked up to me and said, Pastor Yip. I said, oh, uh, who are you? And she told me her name, and she said that I was the little girl that my parents carried me when we left church and then we greet you and I was that little girl and she remembered me from all those years that when she grew up she still remembered me 
because at that time, even at that time, she paid attention to the relationship. So that's the woman, the nature of, of women. And so when women find a husband that pay attention to her and listen to her, she's very happy. She, she finds, she feel that her life is fulfilled when she can find a husband that loves her. And then when she finds a husband that doesn't listen to her, doesn't care about her, then she will be very frustrated. When she is frustrated also, then, then the woman will be controlled by the emotions. Then it's like that in her heart is like a pressure cooker, that the pressure will continue to increase more and more and more, and she's very, very unhappy. She becomes very frustrated. So when we understand the nature of man and woman, then each will grow, and then we can grow. So what should men do? Men should learn to listen to people, to listen to the feelings of people, respond to the feelings of people, care about people's feelings, and care about what people do for them, not the, what their parents do for them, what their friends do for them, you know, because sometimes men are forgetful of what people do for them, and they forget to thank people. So we need to appreciate people and also pay attention to people's feelings and what they say. But it's true that many men have problem listening to people uh, and have problem understanding people, it's, uh, understand the feelings of people. Now, a number of times I counsel couples. Sometimes uh, people who are dating, I counsel them to prepare them for marriage and also counsel couples. And I noticed that in almost all the cases, it's always the man, the, almost always the men say, there's no problem in our marriage. There's no problem. But the woman said, there are problems. And then the problems are what? The husband doesn't listen to her, doesn't care about her, doesn't want to spend time with her. And the men think this is nothing, you know? There's always time in the future. There's more time in the future. Uh, if you want me to listen to you, I'll listen to you. It's, it's nothing. This is not important. Most men think that that is not important to listen to a woman or to a child. And so they don't pay attention to that, and then the relationship becomes worse and worse. Because for men, it doesn't matter, you know. Uh, if he has problems, generally, a man wants to sleep, want to think about the problem himself, want to walk away, want to watch a movie, want to have fun. He doesn't want to think about the problem. He doesn't want to talk about the problem, generally. Men just want to think about the problem and handle it himself. He doesn't want to ask for help. So what happened is, then it's hard for men to understand a woman. Now it has happened a number of times when I counsel a couple. And then the woman says something he wants the man to understand. After she spoke, I asked the man, okay, can you hear can you name the, uh, the feeling of, the, of your wife? What is she feeling? What did she say? And a number of times the man said, I don't know. I didn't get it. They just didn't pay enough attention. And even when they pay attention, sometimes they don't understand because they think this is too small. This is something too small, too unimportant. It's not important. This is not important. That I forgot about her, forgot about her birthday, forgot, forgot about the anniversary, I forgot to ha talk to her, didn't listen to her. It's not so important. So even when the woman talk about the problem, sometimes the man did not understand it, did not pay attention to it, and did, didn't respond because he think it's not important. And then, when the woman keep talking about the problem, then he would get frustrated. He would say, don't talk anymore, you're nagging me, you're nagging me. So then the marriage would, you know, would always become worse and worse. 
So what should men learn to do? That in the church we should have teaching to men about how to listen to wives. Now women should learn that too because women can listen better but still very often they miss what they hear that we all need to learn to listen. Now this is about loving people. When we talk about love people and the Bible says quick to hear, quick to listen and slow to anger. So we want to be quick to listen to people, to pay attention to what people say, to listen to their concerns and their feelings. And when men learn to do that, when men learn to hear the wife and say, oh, I heard that you're unhappy about uh, the workload, your workload, and you're unhappy because the children don't listen to you. Now, very often the men will say, well, you can handle it yourself. I don't want to think about this. I, I go out to work and when I come home, I just want to s lie down and rest. So he doesn't want to spend time listening. He thinks that, you know, marriage for many, for many men, ma marriage is like, I marry this woman, I own this woman, I own the child, they belong to me like a possession. So they have the responsibility to do what they should do. And they should take care of themselves. And when I come home, I should just relax because I already work outside. So I, when I come home, I'll just listen and I'll, I'll watch TV, I'll just rest, I'll just have a nap and have dinner and then I go to bed. So many men don't think of uh, that responsibility to, to listen to the wife and to care about the wife. And what happened then is, then the wife sometimes describe it like this. Talking to my husband is like talking to a wall. When we talk to a wall, the wall doesn't respond. So talking to the husband is like talking to a wall. The wall doesn't respond. The husband doesn't respond. He doesn't understand. He doesn't want to understand. He doesn't have patience to listen. So all people should learn to listen. So when a person says, I'm unhappy. So we want to find out why he is unhappy. Now, if the person has already said that there's too much work and I'm unhappy, then we know that. The unhappiness comes from the workload because there's too much work and also there's not much support. There's not enough support. Women treasure support that they want the husband to pay attention to what she does and, and appreciate her. And then she would feel good. She would feel happy. And then the wife would be a good wife when the husband listen to her and care about her. So when we understand this, how do we build up a good marriage? The way to do is to first, before marriage, both male and female should learn to understand the opposite sex. Men should learn to understand that women treasure relationship, they treasure listening, they want to talk about their feelings, and sometimes it's hard for the man to understand the feelings. Now in Chinese there is a saying, the woman's heart is like a needle in the middle of the ocean. You know, when you drop a needle into the ocean, it's very hard to find it. It's impossible to find it when it drops in the ocean. And the uh, Chinese saying is saying, the woman's heart is like a needle in the ocean that you just cannot figure out why she's unhappy. So we need to understand women are unhappy because uh, the husband doesn't care about her. People don't care about her. Doesn't, uh, they don't listen to her. They don't uh, give her good feelings. They don't comfort her. They don't stay with her. They don't talk with her. So then she'll feel unhappy. So when we understand that, then we want to spend time with the wife. Many men will say, wow, marriage involves so much time. Listen to my wife, that's too much time. And I want to say this to men. 
if you don't want to spend time listening to your wife and talking to her, then you, it's better that you don't get married. Many men get, get married not to have a relationship. They get married in order to have sex and have children, have a family. They don't get married to build up a relationship. Now, in a dating time, they will build up the relationship because they want to get the woman. They want to get this woman. They want to be successful in a dating. So they would do all the best to talk to the woman and be kind to her, listen to her, respond to her. So he would try his best to please the woman. But then after the, you know, the relationship becomes steady and then the woman, even before marriage, would start to demand the man to listen to her, demand the man to spend time with her, to be nice to her, to understand her and to respond to her. And the man will start to become impatient and, and says, well, I like you very much at the beginning when we just have time, have fun and go out and walk, take a walk and have fun and laugh and play. I like that. I like that. But now you demand so much. You want me to listen to you and talk to you and pay attention to you. That's too much work. For many men, they don't like that. And that's why very often, even before marriage already, there is problem in the relationship that the man doesn't want to pay attention to the woman and then the woman tries to get the attention of the man and, and will continue to nag, continue to keep repeating what she wants from the man, keep talking to the man, repeating what she wants to say. She becomes more impatient and becomes more uh, emotional and then the man becomes very unhappy and so there's problem in this relationship. So what the man should do is learn to listen, uh, to pay attention to her needs, and if he doesn't, couldn't figure it out, ask her, say, tell me your feelings. What do you like? What do you like me to do? What can I do better? So we can say this to the woman, what can I do better? And be prepared to pay attention to the woman, and then then we have a good relationship and a good marriage. Then you have the support of the wife, the love of the wife, that the wife is happy with you. And then for the woman, she needs to learn to understand that men pay attention to tasks more, to activities more. So men doesn't like the woman to repeat you know, saying the same thing over and over again. So, the woman needs to learn to be short and brief to explain what she, uh, she wants and say it clearly. In Chinese, we have a saying that when you draw the picture, you have to draw the intestines, you know. <laughs> now, let me explain this. What does that mean? For many women, they might say, listen to me. And the men hear this, they don't understand. Listen to you, what, what, what are you going to say? You know, you just keep saying the same thing over and over again. And it's, it's nothing important, this is not important. So the man doesn't understand that. But the woman had to make it very clear. She has to say, when I'm facing difficulty, I'd like you to listen to me. I like you to respond to me. I like you to tell me, I understand your difficulties. I know that you are facing difficulties. I know that you are unhappy. I know that when I didn't pay attention to you, then you feel unhappy. I know that. I'm sorry about that. Please forgive me. So, the woman has to be very clear. That's why we say in Chinese, when you draw the picture, draw the intestines. Usually, we don't draw the intestines. That means you draw out, you tell the man exactly how you feel. That I like you to do what? I like you to listen to me. I like you not to look at a cell phone when you listen to me. I like you to understand my difficulties. I like you to appreciate me. 
I'd like you to say loving words to me. I'd like you to spend time with me. I'd like you to be with me and doing nothing else, just be, to be with me. So the woman need to be very clear. Now, but many men say, well, that's a waste of time. That's, you know, it's wasting a lot of time. Now that is about relationship. Love is about relationship, love. When we love someone, we will build up the relationship. If we don't have a relationship, we cannot love the person. When we love someone, whoever it is, even a brief encounter, encounter, we want to build up a relationship with the person in a brief encounter, even encounter, even in an evangelism, a time of evangelism. We want to try to listen to the person and respond to the needs of the person, respond to the feelings of the person, and then and then bring out Jesus that He can satisfy your needs, He can comfort you, He can bring help to you, He can comfort your heart. So even in a brief time of evangelism, we want to build a re relationship. And when we minister in the church, we want to build a relationship with people. If a pastor doesn't have relationship with people, he just preaches. And then when he walks down the from the pulpit, he doesn't talk to the people. He doesn't understand the people. He just say, this is too troublesome to listen to you. He just walk away. After he finished preaching, he just walk away. Then it's very hard to have a good ministry if he doesn't build up relationship with his people. So, in all human activities, there needs to be a part of building relationship. And men, for most men, they understand only the part of the activities and of the job, doing something. It's hard for men to understand the part of the relationship. Now some people study and they say that even for jobs that involves, you know, technical skills like, you know, a computer man, a scientist, even people who are doing technical things, the job requires a lot of personal skills. If a scientist cannot have a good relationship with his co-workers, his work will not be going well. If a computer man cannot communicate with people and listen to them and care about them, he cannot help people with the computer problems. So whatever problem we do, we need to have build up relationship. So people are com compartmentalized, compartmentalized. <laughs> Men are compartmentalized to be oriented toward t jobs and tasks. Women are more compartmentalized toward feeling and relationship. And we should combine both. All people should learn to build relationship and build up and do jobs. We need to learn both. And then we are a complete person. And that is the one function of marriage. A pastor who has a good marriage, he will be able to understand people and listen to people and care about people and respond to the needs of the people. And the preaching would have personal touch. If a pastor doesn't understand people's problem, he is just by himself. His preaching would be just about what we should do, what we have to do. And just telling people, you should repent, you should obey, you should do all these things. This is just a task. Sermon. There is no feeling in a sermon. There is no interpersonal element in the in the in a sermon. You know, in, for a sermon to be touching to people, it need to have personal touch, has personal elements that we can talk to, speak to the needs of people, that when people hear our message, they can feel, they can feel the personal touch. They can feel the pastor understand the needs. The pastor understand the feelings. 
that the pastor is not just a mechanical mechanical man explaining the biblical truths. When a pastor just explains biblical truth, it doesn't touch people's heart. But whatever he talks about, he will always touch on the personal elements. Like when he talks about forgiveness, he'll talk about how it's hard for us to forgive people, how when we cannot forgive people, we suffer. When we cannot forgive people, we, we have problem in our relationship, and then we feel unhappy, and a person will feel sad and depressed when he cannot forgive. Actually, when people cannot forgive, he will be, become depressed. So whatever we talk about, sins. Why people sin? Because people are lonely. When people are lonely, they want to sin, commit sins, in order to feel some good feelings. Why do people have lust? Because they want to have the attention of the opposite sex. They want the attention. They need personal touch. So we understand that all people need the personal elements. All people need the interpersonal relationship. But sometimes men, when you notice a few men gather together, when they talk, they talk about football, TV, world news, uh, what happens here or there, or buying, what do we buy, about sports. So it's about tasks mainly. And when women talk, they mostly talk about their husband, their children, their family. They talk about relationship. So now we understand this, then how can we fix the problem? How can we build a good marriage? The way is that the men need to be educated to understand that women pay attention to feelings and relationship. And we need to un understand the women and understanding the women will help us to grow. We can understand people more and we can build a relationship with people more. You know, my relationship with my wife has helped me in my ministry. I understand people more because of my wife. And sometimes when she's with me, when I'm talking to someone, when we go home, she will tell me. Sometimes I did not hear what some people said. I, I, I heard some of the things they said, but I missed some of the things they, they said. Because I was concentrating in changing this person. I wanted to change this person to be more spiritual. So I did not pay attention to what this person is facing, his difficulties. And then my wife, when she comes home, she'll tell me. And she'll tell me in a gentle way. And I, I mature in a way to understand that. If I listen to my wife, then I grow. And I want to enter God's plan. I need to understand what my wife is telling me. I want to listen to my wife and then I can grow in my ministry, in my personal relationship, in my sermons. So I listen to her and I thank her and I try to pay attention to those things. And I understand that it's more natural for her to listen. Now for me, I learned to listen from the seminary, from training. I learned this from training. It's not my natural ability. And I thank God that I have grown in this. But I, whenever I have a task, whenever I want to change this person, sometimes I might not pay attention to all the things he said. I might pay attention to some of the things he said, but not to all the things he said. So this is something my wife helps me. It helps me in my relationship with people in my ministry and help me in my relationship with her. And when I care about her and listen to her, she, then she, uh, she appreciates that and she likes that. And then she, then she treats me very well and I feel loved and I feel, you know, I feel comforted in a marriage. I'm strengthened in a marriage and she's strengthened in a marriage. So it's beneficial for both of us. It helps me personally it helps me to enjoy life. It helps me to enjoy ministry and helps me to 
um, in the relationship with other people to help them. So it helps me in every way. So I thank God for that. And I, so it's not a waste of time for me to spend time with her. And it also is good for me. I need some time to relax. I need some time to have exercise, to go into nature and relax and, and so that I can be refreshed when I come back to my ministry. So there's something I've learned. And then for women, they have learned to, they need to learn to understand the man and to guide the man to understand her. As I said, she need to draw a, a man, a, draw a picture and show the intestines of a person. That means to show all the thoughts inside her. Not just show the outside, but show the inside. She used to tell me. Now, sometimes she told me. She guided me to understand her. She guided me to respond to her. One time, she has prepared something uh, for me for, uh, as, a Christmas, uh, as a birthday gift. And I thank her. And then she said, um, Can you think of the... Yeah, I, I forgot exactly what she said, but some, it's something like this. Can, can you think of the effort I put into preparing this gift? When I heard that, I understand her. Immediately, I understand that. She has put a lot of effort into preparing this gift, but I just said thank you. And it's not enough appreciation. So I said, oh, I thank you, because you have put much effort. You have, prepared, you have this thought, and you, you bought this material, and you prepared the gift. You've spent time preparing the gift, and it's a very special gift. It shows how much you love me, shows how much you care about me shows how much you put the effort into preparing this gift. So it's wonderful to have you and have your gift and especially, most importantly, is to have you. It's special because you prepared this gift for me. So when I said that, she said, you passed, you have 100 points. <laughs> she said, <laughs> you, have, you have done well this time. <laughs> because she's sitting by me now. <laughs> so she was guiding me to appreciate her. And I thank God for that. Then I grow. So I hope you men will grow in your appreciation of your wife and to understand your wife, to care about her, and she'll become a wife that really loves you and likes you and supports you. And then for the wife, you need to draw a, a picture showing the intestines of a person. When you draw a picture, you have to show the man what exactly are you feeling inside, what exactly you want. What do you want the man to do to you? How do you want the man to respond to you? How do you want the man to spend time with you? How do you want him to talk to you and listen to you and, and respond to you? And then when he does it, then you say, you're doing good, you're doing good. Then you applaud him. And then for the man too, when a woman is gentle with you, is not emotional, is not yelling at you and explain to you in a gentle way what she wants, then you say, wow, you're doing good. <clears throat> and also when a woman it's, um, you know, very nice to you. It's hugging you, kissing you. Then you say, wow, I like it, I like it, I like it. And I want to spend time with you. I want to make you happy too. So whatever we know the other person likes, then we want to do it to the other person. Then we can build up the relationship. So when, this, when we have this heart to build up the relationship, then the whole person will grow, a whole life will grow. Then we'll grow as a person, we'll grow as a Christian, then we'll enter the perfect plan of God. Because entering the perfect plan of God involves, includes that we can build up relationship and understand people and respond to people and care about people. And it's not a waste of time. It is how we grow as a person 
and then it also when we have a good marriage we have the best support in the world because our spouse is the most important person in our life because friends can come and go when a friend has to move somewhere then the distance will cause the relationship to to uh, uh, to go down uh, that the person cannot spend so much time with you anymore but the spouse will stay with us so it's important for us to treasure the relationship treasure the marriage and respond to the spouse and be nice to the spouse and be kind to the spouse and then for the woman uh, when you talk with the man speak gently and it's best if the man and woman communicate about something important it's best that they can sit next to each other and hold each other's hands and talk now can you still look at your eyes the eyes of your wife and your husband and smile now in the time of dating uh, people can do that generally but when people after they get married sometimes after a long time they cannot look at the other person's eyes anymore they don't feel comfortable anymore and they don't like to touch the other person so the relationship deteriorates so we want to build up an intimacy we want to build up spiritual support we want to build up emotional support we want to build up cooperation in every area that we work together that we work together to serve God we work together in the family we work together to raise the children when we love the children together we raise the children together then the children grow up to be loving people that people that they can love other people but if the parents are fighting against each other then the children will grow up to be fighting against this the spouse also and they fight with fight with the friends that they have not learned to be gentle to people so as parents if we want a good marriage we want a life to enter God's plan we want to work on the marriage and listen and be kind now we need to understand that men usually when they when uh, a man want to help a woman usually he wants to solve her problem but we need to understand that what a woman need most is not to solve the problem very often is to listen to her and respond to her and many men will say that's useless listening to her is useless I need to solve the problem because men are problem solvers they want to solve problems and for the women the relationship is more important when a man just listen to her hold her hands and be kind to her and respond to her feelings already she feel loved already her problem is half solved when the man understands her when the husband understands her even when someone hurts her it doesn't matter anymore the husband's good kindness is more important the husband's support is more important so as a man we need to understand that don't just solve the problem of your wife but be kind to her be nice to her listen to her support her that is more important to her and when we understand this also when we minister to people we need to understand that when we can support them accept them now many pastors when they help people very often they would criticize the member and say you didn't pray you didn't obey God you sin now all these are true but when we just criticize the member the member feel discouraged but when a pastor listens and says yes I understand your problem I know that you have sinned and you feel guilty and you feel you have no strength and you want to overcome your sins is hard and I understand that and God un understands that too God wants to comfort you God wants to help you so when we understand our wife we can understand the members more and also we can understand how God understands people because very often people think that God is just yelling at people 
But actually, we notice that, like before Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus said, "You know, I have prayed for you that you will not that so that you won't lose your faith, and then when you turn back, strengthen your brothers." So Jesus already said, "I know that you will deny me, but I pray for you, so that you will not lose your faith." And then when you turn back, you strengthen your brothers. So Jesus accepted Peter first before he told him to go and、uh, shepherd the sheep, to take care of the sheep. So Jesus first accepts us. That's why I emphasize this teaching about the sermon of、uh, motivating people with God's grace. It's not just mo- motivating. People with God's law is just telling people what to do, what to do, but we tell them God cares about you. God supports you. God changes your life. God is helping you to change. When you change, God is very happy, and God is happy to bless you. And whenever you change a little bit, God is very happy. So, motivating people by with grace is very, <coughs> very, very important. So when we understand this, then we would. You know, then we learn to、uh, be able to minister to people with God's grace, and then people are more motivated. Okay, so when we talk about marriage, we also talk about understanding the needs of people, accepting people, accepting our wife, accepting our husband, responding to people's needs, responding to their feelings by saying, "Yes, I know it's difficult. I know you feel bad. I'm sorry about that, and I feel bad with you. I know that." It hurts you. I know that what I've done has hurt you. I'm sorry about that. So we want to respond to people's feeling by saying, "Yes, I know you're diff. It's difficult for you. I know you feel bad. It's hurting you. It's causing you to feel bad, and I understand that." So we need to understand people's feeling and respond to their needs. Then we can build up the marriage and build up a relationship with people and build up a ministry. Okay. And also, then we can understand God accepts us. Then we'll be comforted by God's love and strengthened by God's love, so that we have more strength to follow Him. Okay.